Hello lovely and welcome to this week's Crystals and Coffee. Um, this week we're going to be talking about crystals for Samhain, which is Halloween. So crystals for the Halloween holiday. Um, Halloween is my favourite time of year. I absolutely adore Halloween. Um, I love all the stuff that comes with it. I love... Um, particularly with my children, we love to do all of the decorating, all of the pumpkin carving, trick-or-treating, watching scary films, all that kind of stuff. Getting into the spirit and the festivities of Halloween is what I, I absolutely love doing that. But there is much more to Halloween than those things that we've come to become accustomed to with Halloween. There's a lot more to it than um, the decorations, the parties, the sweets, the jack-o'-lanterns. It has, it's very, very... Um, old uh, holiday steeped with um, history and tradition. So the origins of Halloween lie in the pagan celebration of Samhain, which is actually, it's actually spelt, you may have seen the word around, it's actually spelt Samhain, but it's pronounced Samhain, which is where today's word Halloween has become. And Samhain is the pagan new year. It's um, it's the closing of their circle of seasons bringing into the new. So the traditions and the origins of Samhain is that it is the night of the year that the veil between the living and the dead thins. This doesn't mean um, all the scary things that we're used to, like people coming back from the dead and evil spirits and things like that what it what it is is that there's um the veil thins in the sense that you can be reunited with um past loved ones in the sense that they can for one night only come back be closer to you you can connect with their energy because of the thinning of the veil so that is what the meaning behind um, Halloween really is, is that it's a spiritual holiday where we can honour those that are no longer with us. So some of the things that we're used to doing now, again, span from um, original traditions. For instance, we today, we carve jack-o'-lanterns with scary faces and we put them outside our homes or in the windows. And this originated from... Um, putting up scary faces or um, things that would ward off evil spirits or bad spirits or spirits that you wouldn't want coming near you or your home. So we would put up these scary faces to scare them away. So that is where and that is why we carve jack-o'-lanterns. And we, one of the other traditions is to make an offering of food to our loved ones. So this possibly is where the giving of sweets or candy has come out in Halloween is that there would be an offering of food left outside the home for passing spirits for lost loved ones so that they would have food as they passed by and you can also set an empty place at your dining table on Halloween as well to honor those who can't be with us and have them as a, set them a place at the table that they are very welcome to come to you may also like to light a candle um, in, the, uh, in the window of your home to guide your loved ones, guide those spirits that may be passing by for you into where you want them to be near you. So you can have your jack-o'-lanterns, etc. to ward off ones that you don't want and have a candle to lead your loved ones home. And if you use... if you have if you're currently using pagan practices and you have an altar for example you can also put offerings on your altar to these lost loved ones on halloween so on halloween night these are all traditions that started a very 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 long time ago and over the years over the centuries they've evolved and they've become what we're used to today but they do relate to things that were done very traditionally and do have a much deeper spiritual meaning than a lot of the commercialism that's around today. So don't get me wrong, I absolutely love getting into the spirit of Halloween, but I also like to honour the origins of Halloween also. So 
one of the things that you can do to honor the energy of Halloween is we can use some related crystals um, that tune in, which are very relevant and connect very well with the energy that's around on Halloween night. So I've got three crystals um, to talk about that are perfect for honoring the energy of Halloween. The first one is Sunstone. It's a very orange crystal. Again, we associate orange quite a lot with Halloween. And it's a very fun and high energy crystal. So it's going to be giving off a lot of energy for you to join in the festivities, to have a lot of fun, um, and just feeling good on Halloween night. Then we've got Carnelian, which is also an orange stone, but much darker in tone, more of a kind of rusty colour. So Carnelian is a great stone to use on this night because it's all about, it can help you with letting go of the past. So if there are past issues, because again, remember this is a pagan new year. So again, it's like how we may feel on, on our traditional New Year's Eve of letting the past year go by or letting past issues go and then going forward into the new year feeling, um, feeling free of that and focusing on what's happening now and what's going to happen in the future. Carnelian is there to honour this energy that is around on Halloween night as the pagan new year. So about letting go of the past, focus on the now and focus on going forward. And the third stone is black obsidian. Um, so black stones are traditionally, well, more often than not, sorry, protection stones. They are great at dispelling negative energy, warding off negative energy. Um, putting up a nice energetic field around you for some of the stronger stones. So black obsidian is somewhere in the middle. It will help dispel negative energy, but it also has a slightly gentler side to it in the sense that it's also a very healing and comforting stone. So it's not as harsh as just putting up energy blocks and blocking everything out. More so just protecting from energies that you don't want around you but also helping you feel safe and feel comfort and are feeling good about where you are. So if you put all three of these stones together, they connect to make a really wonderful energy for Halloween night or Halloween week or however long you choose to celebrate it for, um, the peak being Halloween night. So you can keep these with you um, throughout the holiday. You can have them on your person. You can... Again, you can put them in a pouch, in your bra, in your pocket, in your desk drawer, in your handbag, under your pillow, wherever you feel, or all of those. Keep them with you at all times, just have them with you so that you can get some direct connection with that energy. And again, as I mentioned earlier, if you have an altar, placing these crystals on your altar is also a great way of honouring the energy and the energy being an offering as well. So it kind of has a double um, a double meaning. You can set up um, you can set up these stones, um, if you doubled up on them, you could have a couple of each and set them up in a grid for Halloween and that intention in the middle of the grid being either honouring a particular loved one or honouring the holiday or just um, seeing it as a, a chance for a new beginning. So you could have a New Year's type goal in the middle and have these crystals around in grid formation and activating that grid again on your altar or somewhere in your home where it's not going to be disturbed over the Halloween period um, and you can keep it there for the rest of autumn if you wanted to. There are all different ways again that you can use them and it's all about going with your intuition and what feels right for you and how you want to use them and what you want to use them for. There's no right or wrong here. So Use those crystals in particular, Sunstone, Carnelian and Black Obsidian. All three together, the two shades of orange and black, they are reminiscent of um, kind of Halloween-y colours as well. So they, and they're very autumnal colours, so they do fit and their energies fit really well with this time of year. So we've talked a lot about Halloween today. I hope that that maybe, if you didn't already know about some of the origins, I hope you found that interesting. So we know that Halloween night is the thinning of the veil. It's about honouring past loved ones um, that may be able to be that much closer to you on Halloween night. And we can leave offerings for them. We can guide them home with candles. 
but also with the thinning of the veil may come uh, spirits that you don't want to become quite close to you and that's where the warding off element of the costumes and the jack-o'-lanterns come in so I always find that when there's a bit of a deeper understanding of where these things come from um, you can appreciate the practice a lot more and really understand where that's come from and it's more of a form of honouring it than seeing as it as a commercial holiday is um, how I like to look at it because to me it is far more than a commercial holiday and like I said it's my favourite time of year so I hope you have a wonderful Halloween um, I hope you have an absolutely great time lots of fun, lots of sweets, lots of spooks um, and also have some time to honour your loved ones too um, we will be back again next Friday for another Crystals and Coffee podcast. I hope you're enjoying these uh, series of um, kind of mini podcasts for you to enjoy over a cup of coffee and learn a little bit about crystals every week. Um, in the meantime, um, you may want to check out my crystal series and oh, I've also got oracle card reading series over on my YouTube channel. You can go to YouTube and search my name or you can go to katiebat.com go to videos and it will take you straight to my channel and you can browse through and see what you want to to do there um, and you will find um, lots of crystal sets and crystal gifts and also this Halloween set of crystals on my Etsy store if you want to check that out again go to katiebat.com and then click on shop and it'll take you straight there for you to have a little browse and if you have any feedback any questions you want to chat at all you can always find me over on Instagram um, I'm at Realistic Hull. Um, I think if you also you can search my name and my handle will also come up, um, and on Facebook the same as well. Just search for Katie Bat and my page will appear. Um, so there's lots of ways you can get in touch with me. Lots of ways you can see what else I've got going on. But I will be back here next Friday with another um, crystals and coffee for you. Um, have a great week, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.